For this example, we're looking at a system of linear equations, and we'll see once we attack it with our elimination process that this system will have infinitely many solutions. But of course, we have no way of knowing that right from the start. So what we're going to do is just take our usual approach and attack this with Gaussian elimination and see what happens. So the first step is always just going to be to form our augmented matrix. So we just write down the coefficients in the right-hand side. Here we go, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9. And if we want to remind ourselves what we're doing, put a little dashed line down there. Okay, now we're going to apply our Gaussian elim elimination. So I'm going to use the 1 to eliminate the 4 and the 6 underneath it. So my row operations will be row 2 becomes row 2 minus 4 row 1, and row 3 becomes row 3 minus 6 row 1. So let's just apply that to our matrix now. So row 1 is not going to be changed, we'll just leave that as it is. Row 2 minus 4 row 1, we'll have a 0 here. We'll have 5 minus 4 2's is negative 3, and then we'll have 6 minus 4 3's is going to be negative 6, and 7 minus 4 4's is 7 minus 16, which is negative 9. Okay, looking now to row 3, we'll have 0 here, as we'd hope. Um, we'll have seven, 7 minus 6 2's is going to be negative 5. We will have um, 8 minus 6 3's is going to be negative 10. And then we'll have 9 minus 6 4's will be negative 15. Okay, now I'm just going to tidy up here. I can see that both of these, both row 2 and row 3, could be divided by negative 3 to make them a little simpler. So I'm going to replace row 2 with negative a third row 2, and same with row 3. This step is optional, but op it often makes it a lot easier to see what's going to happen. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 0, 1, Two, three again. Sorry, that operation should be negative a fifth, not negative a third. Just note that. Okay, and last off, we can see that we can subtract uh, row two from row three. So we'll do the operation row uh, three becomes row three minus row two, which gives us the matrix. 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, at this point we've hit echelon form, but I've noticed that I don't have a full set of um, pivot variables here. I have two pivots, x1 and x2. And we're going to have one free variable. So in the situation where we have free variables, it's usually best to proceed completely to reduced racial on form because it makes the substitution process easier. So we're going to proceed to reduced racial on form. Okay, which in this case, both pivots are already one, so we don't need to do anything about that. We just need to get rid of the two above this one here. So the operation that will do that is row 1 becomes row 1 minus 2, row 2. And our matrix will now be 1, 0, 3 minus 2, 2 is negative 1, 4 minus 2, 3 is negative 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, at this point we do our usual procedure. Um, x3 is our free variable, so we let x3 be equal to a parameter t, and then we solve for the other two. So the second equation tells us x2 plus 2x3 equals 3, which implies x2 equals 3 minus 2t, 
And then, then the first equation tells us x1 minus x3 equals negative 2, which implies x1 equals negative 2 plus t. Okay, we now have an expression for x1, x2, and x3. Here they are, x1, x2, and x3. So we'll write them down first as parametric equations. x1 is negative 2 plus t. x2 is 3 minus 2t. And x3 equals t. And we can also write them down as a set of vector equations. So, actually it's not quite right like that. In vector form that becomes, if I can erase, I can't, oh well. x1 x2, x3 equals constant terms, negative 2, 3, and 0, plus t times 1, negative 2, and 1. And that is our general solution to the system of equations. It has infinitely many solutions because of the presence of a free variable, and it's consistent. We didn't get any rows of equations saying 0 equals 1 or something like that. So 